After watching YouTube and seeing these big name magicians performing their acts, he somehow thinks they are using godly powers that they stole from him. He finally has an original idea. They robbed the secret powers granted to me by the Supreme Being. I must sue them. Ladies, gentlemen, and all the kids and all of us, the amazing, the spectacular, the magical, he is mystical, the only David Copperfield. For thousands of years, magicians have been entertaining the public with psychological illusions that leave our brains thinking. How did they do that? Magic is the oldest form of human behavior. There are three great kinds of belief that run through human history. Religion is the relationship with God, master of our lives and destinies. Science separates us from the physical world, turning us into observers and collectors of knowledge. And magic is direct participation in the universe. We can affect the world around us, and the world can affect us. Under the 18th century, Magic shows were a common source of entertainment at fairs, where itinerant performers would entertain the public with mysterious tricks. The art became increasingly respectable, and shows would be put on for rich private patrons. In the mid-1800s, Jean-Eugène Robert Houdin was the first magician to perform his tricks in front of an audience and gain prestige among the wealthy class. Known as the father of modern magic, he brought magic from the street and circus sideshows to an elegant stage or drawing room. Originally a trained clockmaker, Robert Houdin switched to practicing magic when he opened a theater in Paris in the 1840s. His unique magic trick of the time was creating small mechanical pieces that seemed to move and act as if they were alive. The late 19th century brought on celebrity magic and celebrity magicians. This was the time of the world-famous Harry Houdini, whose spellbinding tricks were based on the ability to escape impossible situations. For most of his career, Houdini was the headline act in vaudeville. For many years, he was the highest paid performer in American vaudeville. Performance magic became a staple of Broadway theater, vaudeville, and music halls. Magic easily moved from theatrical venues to television specials, which brought stage magic to huge audiences. Famous magicians of the 20th century included Doug Henning, James Randi, Penn and Teller, David Blaine, Chris Angel, and the subject of this case, David Copperfield, whose incredible illusions have included the disappearance of a Learjet the vanishing and reappearance of the Statue of Liberty, levitating over the Grand Canyon, walking through the Great Wall of China, escaping from Alcatraz prison, the disappearance of an Orient Express dining car, and flying on stage for several minutes. By 2006, he had sold 33 million tickets and grossed over 4 billion more than any other solo entertainer in history. But let's not forget Christian Bowler, a street magician who performed at restaurants and small venues. He tried in vain to be a real celebrity magician, working on magic tricks at home and believing that he had been granted amazing godlike powers of prestidigitation and sight of hand, and failed miserably. After watching YouTube and seeing these big name magicians performing their acts, he somehow thinks they are using godly powers that they stole from him. He finally has an original idea. They robbed the secret powers granted to me by the Supreme Being. I must sue them. And he did. But what went through Christian Bowler's mind to reach this conclusion? He is God. 
and therefore, he has godly powers. In June of 2005, he sued two of the biggest celebrity magicians, David Blaine and David Copperfield, for defying the laws of physics and using Bowler's godlike powers. He demanded that the magicians show their secret tricks to him and give him 10% of their total income for life. He was serious. Bowler first sued celebrity magician David Blaine. He demanded that Blaine reveal his secrets or pay him 10% of future earnings. 30 million. At this point, Bowler actually believes he is a god and that famous magicians still his amazing powers to perform their tricks, to which he self-entitled to a percentage of their income. He had a patent application for godlike powers. He's also the de facto inventor of all technology that exists. More entitlement money required, and being the genius he obviously is, he files his own lawsuits. By his own admission, Bowler suffers from psychological maladies, but his lawsuits proceed regardless. Christian Bowler also filed a $50 million lawsuit against David Copperfield in March of 2005, claiming Copperfield used his unearthly abilities without his permission. Logical? Not very. Copperfield's legal team argued the right to use godly powers is beyond the jurisdiction of any court. The case was dismissed with prejudice, which protected Copperfield from further lawsuits. The judgment conclusion was due to United States Code 35, Section 271, patent infringement, which reads in part, except as otherwise provided in this judgment, whoever without authority makes, uses, offers to sell, or sells any patent invention violates the patent. Whoever actively causes infringement of a patent shall be liable as an infringer. No patent owner, otherwise entitled to compensation for infringement or contributory infringement of a patent shall be denied relief. The patent owner has market power in the relevant market for the patent or patent product on which the license or sale is conditioned. In other words, you can't patent God. And then, God spoke to Christian Bowler. Thou art banished from the magic circle. So a fraudulent lawsuit costing tens of thousands of dollars and taking up precious judicial time was sensibly resolved, all because of failed and untalented street magician that his very limited imagination lead him into the treacherous waters of the courtroom. Was it illusion or delusion? The purpose of magic is to give the illusion that the impossible has been achieved. The impossible becomes a reality, but in real life, the courtroom is no illusion. Case closed. The courtroom is adjourned until the next argument is presented.